For more on this, we're joined by Democratic Congressman from Massachusetts, Jake Auchincloss. Congressman, welcome. Thanks, Mike. So the U.S. is sending this THAAD missile system to Israel. Major General Pat Ryder at the Pentagon saying about it, quote, this action underscores the United States ironclad commitment to the defense of Israel and to defend Americans in Israel from any further ballistic missile attacks by Iran. It is part of the broader adjustments the U.S. military has made in recent months to support the defense of Israel and protect Americans from attacks by Iran and Iranian-aligned militias. What is your reaction to this significant news? I think it says three things. One, it's another example of the really unprecedented military alliance between the United States and Israel. We're not going to let our ally fight alone in the Middle East while it's encircled by a ring of fire. Uh, number two, this complements the tighter sanctions that President Biden has recently announced on Iranian oil exports. We want to hit Iran both uh, defensively in terms of its ability to respond against any Israeli attacks, but also economically. Uh, and then finally, and, and potentially most importantly, Mike, it's another opportunity for Prime Minister Netanyahu to articulate and then execute a strategy that makes Israel safer and makes the Middle East more peaceful in the long run. That is to say, get the hostages home from Gaza and marginalize Hamas by having Palestinian-led reconstruction in Gaza, uh, helping the Lebanese army clear out Hezbollah and create a buffer zone in the north, mm -hmm. and then marginalize Iran's hardliners and uplift its moderate middle class while wedging it from China. These are the imperatives strategically that need to be paired with Israel's recent tactical successes. Let me ask you a question. I guess some folks on the couch may be asking right now, do you worry about this dragging the U.S. into a broader conflict in the Middle East? Whenever there are U.S. troops in the Middle East, I'm always concerned as an American, as a former Marine officer who knows how dangerous that neighborhood is. Uh, the United States needs to maintain a military uh, and security umbrella in the Middle East because it's a volatile and violent region and we have interests and allies there. We have deployed our aircraft carrier strike groups to the Eastern Mediterranean. We have uh, U.S. troops in Syria and Iraq. And yes, we're going to position U.S. Uh, anti-missile batteries and U.S. troops in Israel when necessary to defend our ally. But certainly no one is looking for another uh, regional conflagration like George W. Bush started in 2003. We want the Abraham Accords to be strengthened and expanded so that we have an insurance policy in the Middle East against further war and can fully pivot to the Indo-Pacific, where our near peer, China, is really the pacing adversary of the 21st century. All right. I'd like to ask you about one issue here at home. Speaker Mike Johnson talked today about FEMA and its response to the hurricanes. Let's play it. FEMA was slow to respond. They, they did not do the job that we all expect and hope that they will do. They have billions, tens of billions of dollars mm -hmm. that were already sent to FEMA one day before Helene made landfall. So they, they have plenty of resources. Congressman, I know you represent Massachusetts and not North Carolina, but in your view, was FEMA slow and do they have the funding they need right now? I think FEMA's responded vigorously. Of course, there should be an after action, as there always is with these disasters, to see what can be improved upon. And I want to hear from the elected officials of both parties in the affected states to understand from their perspective and their constituents' perspectives what happened and what we can do better. Uh, in terms of the funding streams, I think what Speaker Johnson needs to acknowledge is there's really two critical funding streams for disaster response. One is FEMA, of course, which mm -hmm. helps to rescue and then repair. The other, though, is the Small Business Administration, which helps people get back on their feet after a disaster. And in fact, sometimes the largest source of federal funds for individuals is through SBA, not through FEMA. Now, SBA has said that they are rapidly exhausting their monies. And so the speaker needs to either, one, say that he doesn't agree with their assessment and explain why. Okay. Two, say that it doesn't matter that SBA is low on funds and explain why. Or three, reconvene Congress and help us appropriate more funds for the SBA. But he hasn't done any of those three things. Okay. Congressman Jake Auchincloss, we will follow it. Thanks for your time today. Good to be with you.